Welcome to today's rebroadcast podcast number 53 titled, The World Slowly Burns, So Spiritual Preparedness is Paramount, with Pastor Paul Begley and Mike from COT on the End Generation Project, showcasing daily excellence by ways of current eschatology and and renowned speakers on addiction and alcoholism. Join us as we read into the latest global insights with our hosts, Pastor Paul Begley and Mike from Council of Time. We're privileged today to tap into the wisdom of the Council of Times host, Michael, whom is one of the most important Christian voices of this generation. For deeper insights, visit the official Council of Time website linked in the description. Join our mission of disseminating God's word and carrying a message of recovery to those still suffering from addiction around the world. We are here to bring hope in these critical and upside down times. Your support drives our mission and unlocks the transformative potential of living a meaningful life of truth and sobriety, preparing for what the Bible calls perilous times. Time to get prepared. If you enjoy these videos, we have a brand new Locals community now as well as Patreon. Please see our latest poll, then we have a better idea what our beloved viewers prefer. We have lots more information on that in the description. In short, we are blessed to have the chance to run a full-time channel thanks to our beloved subscribers. See the link in the description. But now, before we get into today's rebroadcast podcast, The World Slowly Burns, so spiritual preparedness is Paramount Episode 53, a heartfelt thank you for your unwavering support. As we journey together, we're committed to maintaining this podcast ad-free. Your backing enables us to share God's word far and wide. Remember to subscribe, like, and message us for daily excellence in your life. Just those simple acts help get us out into the world, where we have our podcast translated into over a dozen languages. It's all right time for today's podcast. The world slowly burns, so spiritual preparedness is paramount on End Generation Project Rebroadcast Podcast number 53 with Pastor Paul Begley and Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Pastor Paul, God bless you. Doing okay. Okay. Man, we're, we're on fire over here, Mike. Um, it's because, well, we had Rex Bear on a little earlier, and, boy, he was, he was uh, just excited. You know, he had a great presentation for the webinar, and then he was all excited about some more new info about these eclipses and this – uh, this moon that's coming up. And so there's a lot going on, Mike, and you, in your presentation in this webinar, you dropped too many, you dropped so many bombs on me. I just had to go back and say, Heidi, it's off the chain. Are you serious? Well, I hope folks are uh, ready. They better be. Cause I think that's what you're sending a clear cut message that, uh, it's time. We got to really get serious with God, don't we? Yeah, these are serious times, Pastor. They really are. Amen. Mike, going to ask you a question here. Uh, we did get reports that in Taiwan, Taiwan's uh, sec- uh, defense minister admitted that there are U.S. troops in Taiwan, and not yes. just a few, and that they're and they're and they're even on those little islands right up there close to the the border of China. One island's only three miles off the coast. So, yes. are we sending? We're, we're, Biden's still saying that we got a one China policy, but is there something going on here? Well, we have actually, best of all, we have troops in every area of interest of the USA. We do. We have we secure every asset country that we have, and uh, but there is a brewing um, destabilization between China and the rest of the world as far as um, you know the West and the allies. So we have things are brewing fast, quick, and um, but everybody has to get ready. They, I, I believe, they understand the eventual outcome of uh, these events. What they will be. Well, when you say these events, we're dealing with Russia and Ukraine, and and there's a high alert. Is is there a high alert really with the NATO nations? Oh yeah. The USA and NATO have never been on the, we're on the highest alert we've ever been on ever uh, because of Russia and the Ukraine. We've been on that uh, level of alert for some time now and China and uh, North Korea are only beginning to, you know, raise that uh, alert level. Of course, for the high alert level, you also have to be combat ready. 
right? You have to be combat ready. That can be very uh, tasking, very expensive, but very tasking. So we're just in, we're at one of those times that are, it looks like it could be just like usual, right? It could pass over, it could go to nothing. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what's happening, right? We already have certain things that have escalated beyond repair. Let's put it that way. And there is no repair to uh, certain things that have happened. So it, th this looks like a one-way road to conflict. And in and, and some way, form, or fashion, uh, there will be conflict. And it will, uh, you know, it's escalation time from there. Um, as that goes on in, in Europe, we have information now that they have built the ramp. They have built the ramp to sacrifice the red heifer. Uh, and I have pictures of it. Uh, I've been putting up on the screen. Uh, it's quite remarkable, really. Um, they're serious. They're serious. And, I, and, and, you know, it's part of the security. It's, is it's really, the, they're saying, Hamas is saying, this is the reason for the war. We have to stop Israel from sacrificing the red heifer and, and, and getting the burnt ashes and preparing to build the third temple. They're, they're saying that's their reason. What are you hearing, Mike? Well, you remember last time they wanted to sue Israel uh, because Israel's God, they said, was causing their rockets to go off course. You remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. Yes, yes. So they are they are very serious about uh, spiritual matters with Israel. They know the implications of it. Why? Because they have examples, examples the world does not have, right? They're, they've, they've been in some impossible situations um, where supernatural events have been against them, right? They've seen this time and time again in the rest of the world. They, they won't share it with the rest of the world um, because it's embarrassing, right? For example, if you had brand new equipment uh, that somebody gave you to use against Israel, right? And the moment you touch it, all of it fails across the entire line. You would say, what is this? You know, what's happening here? Or if you had... Um, there was a case where all their of all their troops, all the guys of a certain age died in one night, right? Things yes, like that yeah. are happening. That's to Hamas. crazy. So, um, so they know yeah. that's supernatural when that happens. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And they know yeah, they, and it's it's sort of like the Bible in the Old Testament when they fought the children of Israel. They knew they were fighting against their God, Israel's right. God. So Hamas is very they're well acquainted with uh, what can happen when you go against uh, Israel. They're well acquainted with that. And again, they won't share that with the world, but they have lots of uh, stories like that that are uh, odd, strange, right? They had a tornado one time that never showed up on the forecast. It tore up uh, a lot of the Hamas training centers. So, you know, things like that happen. You've never heard of a tornado, right, in that area, right? No, Nobody else has no, heard of it no, either. No, no, But those guys experienced it, and the damage was real. So was the uh, death toll. Uh <laughs> today israel was able the the uh idf was able to capture around 650 uh, uh, uh hamas fighters who actually surrendered another 140 some were killed in the fighting before the surrender uh this is uh real close or just inside the city limits of rafa is israel how far, how long will it be? I mean, there's the, the tunnels are deep there. There are way lots of tunnels, a lot of stuff. How many months do you think it's still going to take Israel to, to finish off Hamas? Well, they, they cleared out tunnels, correct? But they also found out that Hamas had re-established uh, some of those tunnels, right? Hamas is one of the names that stands out with the public, but the Houthis, Right, the Houthis are starting to go against Israel, so they have a they have a big issue right now. They're surrounded, uh, big time, by enemies, uh, save for one place in, in the northern region, but even that region, what they what they refer to as uh, <clears throat> that region is being is being is going to be overrun by Houthis here shortly, and and some of their forces. So Israel remains totally surrounded, and what I find amazing. With this stuff is that, um, it, you know, you read about that in the Bible, but you read about how people are during those times, right? It's, yes. it's kind of like this, uh, it's kind of like this solar event. Yes. 
this uh, this eclipse, this eclipse was set in motion at the beginning of creation, right? Yeah. Not just you know last week, but at the beginning of creation. Absolutely. And the in in all these stars and everything in the heavens have not altered their course. They they they've kept their course. But here's the part that gets me. This solar eclipse happens, and it just so happens that mankind is acting exactly like the Bible said they would begin to act, <laughs> right? So it, it's almost like man man is catching up to his own destiny. Yes. Of his own, uh, you know, because man is ludicrous, it seems, these days. But they are, they have, a lot of people have become heartless. This eclipse is a warning. You have a lot of the world, they're going right to the side. Oh, I want to see it and this, that, and the other. So they're not going to take this seriously. They don't see a warning, right? But uh, it is it's hitting over parts of America that have devastating results as far as policy and everywhere else. I think that, and it's it's almost hits right there at the devil's home, in uh, when it goes over Texas and Mexico. Okay, a part of Texas and Mexico. Anyway, it, it's just amazing that man would finally mature or or come to that level where prophecy matches the disposition of mankind, right? I agree. They don't want to hear the word of God. Nope. They don't want to hear the word Christ. Nope. They find uh, Christianity as a boring subject. They do not embrace their brother. They find ways to slaughter their brother. All these things are happening in the world. You have um, evil ruling the people. And the folks who do have a righteous tongue that desire to cry out, no one wants to hear that, right? No. Nope. And so, uh, and people are, you know, God said, vengeance is mine. And that's the number one thing people seek after these days is vengeance. And God said, don't touch it. So they mm. won't see this as a warning, but I'll tell you something. I wouldn't be surprised if every last area, especially starting at St. Louis, going down into Mexico, if every last area, they they might want to watch uh, this solar eclipse and take heed of it, because uh, this will this will have repercussions. And how yeah. many warnings will the Lord give? Because this will set in motion at the beginning of time. Are right? you said the devil's home? I mean, are, are you <clears throat> saying somewhere between St. Louis and Mexico? Is the devil's home? Well, there's some bad stuff, Pastor Paul, in the southern region of the U.S. concentrated in one spot, right? Is that the it's Texas? One of the reasons, is it it's the, one of the reasons old churches were put there a long time ago. Is it and, the uh, Texas Triangle, or is it, uh, is it in Louisiana? Or what, what? No, it's not. It's not Louisiana. It's right, right above. Um, right, it's in Texas. Yeah. It's in Texas, but it's also guarded, right? Okay. Fort Hood, Fort Hood has access to it. It is a not so good place. I wouldn't be surprised if that place would be. It, it'll be uncovered one day. As for what it is, wow! This but, is a, uh, wow. Okay, now, Mike, let me ask you a question. And, and, and I'm not saying I, I'm just shocked by this information. 1811, we had a partial blood moon, just like we're going to have this Sunday night. Okay, right. Two weeks later, we had a solar eclipse uh, over America. A month later. The, we had a comet. Now, that comet was already coming. It was visible during the eclipse. Yeah. A month later, it got real close. On October 20th, it was its closest point to the Earth. It also had some devil horns as it was coming. They see, Everybody's seen it. It was called the Great, uh, you know, the Great Comet. Um, then in December 16th of that same year, 1811, three mega quakes, 7.2, 8.2. 7.8, all on December the 16th, 19, or 1811, right in the New Madrid area. Then, the next month, January 23rd, uh, same area, another mega quake of uh, 7.6 or 7.8. And then a month later, on uh, f uh, February the 7th, the biggest one, 8.6 or 8.8, .8, you know, it, it, I, we're not sure. It's gigantic. It rolled the Mississippi backwards for three hours. It destroyed. I mean, it really sh reshaped the, the heartland of America. Right. Uh, here we are now, Mike. We got a partial blood moon. Two weeks later, we have a total solar eclipse going right over the very area where all this happened. And we have a comet that's coming 
in, and we'll see it in the shadow of the moon during the eclipse as it comes closer to the earth. Are we going to have, is God sending us a clear message that if we don't repent, the, the Nineveh moment, we're going through nine, eight cities of Nineveh and all that, you've heard all that. Do you, let me ask you this question. Can solar eclipses cause earthquakes? Well, the, the, the moon can cause tidal forces uh, to change, right? Yes, yes. So it can move massive amounts. It can attract massive amounts of water to itself. It has a certain gravitational That's true. pull That's true. based on where the moon is, right? If okay. it hits part of the earth where uh, certain parts of the uh, place of the earth, you can most certainly do the same thing on the land, right? Depends on what's underneath the land mass. So yes, because tidal forces, right, are, are pulled away from the earth, right? High tide and all that good stuff. The moon does that. So if the moon gets, the sun has gravitational pull also, and it's, uh, it stabilizes. So if the moon gets in front of the sun, it'll disrupt or it can amplify the gravitational force of the sun. And then you have the force of the moon. So that's almost, uh, you know, one and a half times the gravitational pull as either object. So yes, it can absolutely cause problems in the crust of our earth. Absolutely. So isn't it, do you find it kind of, I mean, do you find it weird that they were having a repeat from 1811? No, not really. You know, okay. I, I, what? because they didn't listen. In 1811, uh, there was, and I'm not quite clear on this, but in 1811, there was a battle over the Bible itself in 1811. Do you know that? Over no, the Word of God itself in 1811? No. Yeah. So... They they uh, they really didn't heed that either. Same thing is happening now. The same thing is happening now. I, I guess what people are, what what most are losing their sensitivity towards is the word of God is highly diluted in the world right now. It is, and we know through policy, um, through just abominations on top of abominations, more and more kids and young people are being drawn towards worldly doctrine and they're leaving the bible alone they're just throwing christ right out of the kids minds and so uh the the, the center of these troubles is coming you know it's coming from us the usa we we were given that mantle to, to uh you know to carry that but we've dropped the ball and so it, it's not shocking to me that uh another warning would come but but here's what i believe i believe this is more than a warning We've had the warnings. We're yeah. not listening. We're We've not had listening. the warnings. We're not We've had, you know, of all the storms that hit the world, we get most of them. Of all the hurricanes that hit the world, we get most, we get most of them. Yes, all we do. Them. Yes. We have all the geological nightmare troubles anybody has ever had. We're still not listening. And so how many more times does God have to warn before he actually does something? And before he loses his own people, right? He's going to wake us up with an alarm clock. I believe this year is that alarm clock. This eclipse, right, is a is it's more than a warning. It's almost like a final line that has been drawn, and man has already crossed it. They're not going to heed this. They're going to throw parties where it pops up, right? Right. You exactly because right. Because they think it's an interesting event. They have forgotten that we have a creator. They have forgotten that he set the moon and the sun and all the stars and the heavens for signs and for seasons. They're not acquainted with, with God's seasons and times, only with their seasons and times. They've rewritten everything. And so people, they might want to take this as an alarm clock to get rid. They better make sure they're ready because this time the consequences are coming. Right, the yeah. fatalities are coming. You know, it's important that we say this. And and someone made a comment in the in the chat room just a second ago, and it was a great, it was a good comment. It said, "People, this is not the rapture. You know, this isn't uh, what God's God can do the rapture when He wants to, and He's going to. He's got it. He He's got it exactly figured out. But at the same time, before He brings the final judgment, let's say the wrath of God down on humanity, He's going to give every possible warning sign he's going to send as many prophets and preachers and people he can because it says that god's it's not his will that any should perish that's right but now we do but all should come to repentance okay that's right. so mike as you're right here this is a, a warning sign this is a warning 
And as you said, people won't eat it. And I know you're right. There will be people who will think this is just cool and, you know, have a party. But there are some. I'm hoping that we're getting the message out that there's some who are wondering, we're looking at the wickedness that's going on in the world and, the, and all the apocalyptic signs of Matthew 24, that maybe there's some, there will be some, who will say, wow, I got to get my life right with God. And do you think that there will be people who will hear this message? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident they will pass ball, but I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm reminded that um, time keeps going on. And then it stops at a particular time. At this time, when, when Paul says that day shall not come, that's their come a yes. falling away first, right? Yes, that's now, right. what that tells me is this. The world is the world. They're, they're, you know, the world is what we were once in sinners. We're sinners saved by grace. So God calls us out. But when the world gets to the point where it begins to consume God's children who have already come to him, that falling away from the faith, right? That's the final line right there. That, that is the final line. When God's children become affected by the world, when they're overwhelmed and they start going back into the world, then God, the clock is stopped. And that's it. No more time. And that's going to be the end of that, you know, battle. And what I see more and more now is a lot of people, I, well, they, they are. They, they, they are alert. They're aware of prophecy. They're called to it, right? They're getting everything right. They're getting their houses in order. But then there's a building number of people who are in the body of Christ, who have been with the Lord, who are becoming highly, they're just bitter. Uh, they're becoming bitter. Yeah, they are. And when, when you see this multiplied more and more, you know that the Lord's going to, that, that, that angel's going to stand and make that declaration. Time will be no longer. You know, that's the end of, because when the Lord comes back, that's the end of grace and yep. mercy. Yes, that's it. it. Is. They're, they're, that, that'll be the finishing of the number of the inclusion of the Gentiles. That number will be complete. There'll be no more salvation and people are going to be stuck where they are. So these things that are happening, right, that the world cannot recognize because the Lord said they wouldn't, but God's people will. If it impacts God's people, well, then we're in good shape. Right. Yes. But if it doesn't, if it does not impact God's people in a holy manner, well, then the clock is about to stop. And I believe this time, just watch and I'll have to be bold on this one. This eclipse, whether people believe it or not, God set these things in motion at the beginning. Yes. They are not for entertainment. No. It certainly is not for a flag saying, hello, I'm going to do something good. When God sends any sign or signal, it's always been a warning. And after that warning, there's always been a drastic change. This one will be different because the iniquity is multiplied oh, in the land. Oh, oh, oh. So it's it's even worse than the days at Nineveh. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the U.S. right now, I hate to say it, it's just like Sodom and Gomorrah. It is. Right? Yes. Because immorality is the commonality of the nation. It's okay to curse. It's okay to be immoral. It's okay to have murderous thoughts and deeds and all sorts of things, right? So watch and see what happens. Now, the U.S., I, I would not be shocked if, if um, half those places just burn up and go poof. I know for a fact that we're in a bad predicament that people may not be aware of. We know that Hamas and Israel have been at war. We know that people in the U.S. have sided with Hamas. We know that those same people who sided with Hamas have, they lean towards the Islamic kingdoms and not God's kingdoms. But here's what people may not know. There are massive internal threats in America. You can, there's no way any agency nor the U.S. Army, nor the U.S. Air Force, or anybody else can go and pinpoint who is who this time. They cannot do it. Pastor, they have to call. They, they're about to put all hands on deck because there are, there are things that the public is not going to be notified about, right? Right. Um, because while this political season is being charged, everybody has their attention in one area. And I can tell you right now, evil is planning to kill as many as they can in this country. In America? Right Are you saying America? Right now, in America. Okay. Not, not, not overseas. We're talking about America. Right here. And so people better get used to seeing uniformed individuals, right, patrolling everywhere in the USA, everywhere. People better get used to 
uh, you know, the summer's coming, right? The summer's coming. New policies have passed, yes, about electric cars, this, that, and the other, right? Right. But uh, the temperatures are going to be too hot to sustain the power grid. Yes. So they might want to get ready for anybody in a city uh, that lives in a city. You might want to have your exit plan to get out of that building when the power goes out because your power will go out. Folks. And then, of course, red flags, right? Red flags are all throughout the East Coast. That'd be one thing if if we had if we had fire conditions in the Midwest, you know, West Coast. We expect that, not on the East Coast. Pastor, do you not know that right now on the East Coast, as of the last two days, the fire uh, warnings, signals, and alerts, readings, and everything else has been heightened all across the East Coast. Yes, right. Because we meteorology. Well, the heat. They know the heat's coming. Right. The dryness. The humidity is here. The moisture is not enough, right? The foliage is telling that story, and it's going to get a lot worse, a whole lot worse. So we're about to have a burn, um, you know, some sort of a a burn incident in our nation. And we're not the only ones. Now, you called three weeks before it happened, the Texas fires. You said, uh, Texas, watch out. Watch out for Texas wildfires are going to happen three weeks later it was the biggest wildfire in the history of texas uh we still don't know how many thousands of cattle died uh it's still burning out there by the way it's not over you're saying we're about ready to have that kind of a moment in the northeast uh oh yes all over the place there's a whole over the place including canada is not exempt mexico is not exempt venezuela all those places are not exempt Water this time does not matter. And you know what? After I made some calls to Texas um, when we spoke about that, okay. right? because sometimes things do concern me, and I take it a step further. But, Pastor, what 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 we really face, people, they don't have a clue about. Why don't they have a clue about this? They don't know the conditions of the lands that they're in right now. I'm talking about humidity and moisture and the potential, right? Uh, Fire departments, they don't have enough people. They did a people inventory of most fire services. They are undermanned. You know what that means? Oh, and by the way, most municipalities have no clear exit plan for their people. They don't have a fire plan. So that means if a fire starts in a place where it normally does not start, people are not going to be able to get out safely. Well, you talked, not. you covered in this webinar, unbelievable, uh, I almost called it the summer of nightmare. Uh, your presentation is incredible about things that are coming. Uh, um, and this is why, guys, you want to get the ticket for this because you don't want to miss what Mike had to say in that. And not just Mike, BPR is watching all the others, done such a great job. But you're, you're really, I can hear it in your voice. I hear it in your voice that this is, this is a time. This is a different time. This is worse than what we've ever seen. Imagine wildfires burning in Pennsylvania and into New New York, New Jersey, uh, into you know into where the huge populace is with lots of structures. There's no possible way if if the Texas fires or the California fires were to hit the Northeast. It's 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 ten times worse because of the population. A- am I right? That's right. That's right. It's a it's a it's just not a good situation, right? It it is not a good. If Washington D.C. totally burned up, right? Do you think people would finally wake up? And uh, because we have a bad habit, a lot of people say, "Well, you know, it's a it's planned." Well, I'll tell you, my friend, it does not matter when people die. It's kind of like nine eleven. Right. Yeah. They say, well, 9-11 was, or, was orchestrated. It doesn't matter if it's a false flag, a green flag, or it doesn't matter what flag it is. People died. And so I'm telling people right now, the same thing is going to happen within the USA. It does not matter what the origin is. It matters what the outcome is. Yeah. And if people have a chance to prepare for that, right, to yes. really prepare for that soberly, this is their opportunity because they may not come again. And also, while that's going on, Cascadia right now, there's all kinds of quakes shaking. I mean, that Cascadia fall line right now has really been shaking here in the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, I mean, we're always due for one out there, too. I mean, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? 
Well, you know what people should know by now, right? That area is not going to hold. As soon as the cork, the uh, Coast Coast plate is shifted enough, that the Cascadia fault zone is going to give way. It's going to give way. Uh, it's just not going to have enough back pressure, right, to slow the um, movement of that of that you know under that that pulling under the lands. Not only that, but if the Cascadia goes, that will go all the way over to Nashville, Tennessee. Do you know that? No. What? That when, will no, affect. Wait. That will affect everything over to Nashville, Tennessee. So when people hear about the Cascadia. Um, uh, fault zones and all these different zones over there, right? They they don't they don't really understand that these fault lines are intimately moving together, right? And that they're very delicate. When one if one goes in a big way, it will affect us, the USA, all the way to Tennessee. That that's a disruption of the entire country, right? So California going is everybody going. Pretty much. So that coast, right, that, that what's the name of that uh, fault line down there? That little coast, coast. What do you call it? Coast, coast plate. That's a coast, coast plate. Yeah, and you talked about that once. I think a couple years ago we did a webinar. It's like a pressure cork. Yeah, it's just like a pressure cork, and it's very deep, and it has very old rock underneath. That that amazingly, right? It's almost just like a cork, in which magma goes around it. Now, if that gets shifted enough, if it's moved out of its place, right? or loses its material, the other plates are going to shift back on it. They're going to fall right back on it, right? That pressure is going to fall right back on it, but it will release the other plates. They're going to just crack open freely. If that happens, it's, the show is over, which is why um, all these earthquakes in Haiti and Chile are very disturbing. Um, uh, Mexico and their earthquakes and volcanism is very disturbing. Right, a lot of money has been spent down at the Coast Coast Plank to watch that plate because they have an understanding. When it goes, the show is over. I think then what happens is that whole uh, fault line going up through Mexico, through the uh, through the California. I mean, you know, your San Andrea fault line all the way up the coast, up to Cascadia's uh, subduction zone. We would have massive mega quakes of biblical proportion, and yeah, been, California wouldn't survive. Yeah, and San Diego would be done, and, and and yeah, wouldn't be it'd be ugly. So, yep. and now we have the new mid New Madrid. Think about that. You know, the Cascadia subduction zone hasn't really gone off in a big way since 1700, so it is so overdue. And then you got the San Andreas, probably 85 years overdue, and then you've got the New Madrid. It's we're talking 1811, 1812, and we're and we're seeing this this partial blood moon and the solar eclipse, and uh, the, you know right down the line the comet and all of these issues and the planet alignment and all the things that's happening. It's almost like a repeat, and it's been two hundred and some years since that fault line did what it did. We're so overdue. God's is it the grace of God just holding these things barely to get, to see what we're going to do? Is that, is that what's going on? Well, yeah. Look at look the um, the the entire California system, right? Um, when you look at all those potential problems that can come from uh, San Andreas, that that entire plate region, right? It is only by grace. It's not happened yet. What are the chances, right? That something we say things are overdue, meaning man assigns a frequency to events like that, a probability of an outcome of something like they say Yellowstone is overdue. This is man's timing. Okay. Right? Yes. And what they mean is, is that in the past they have had more frequent events uh, with these areas than they do now. It's almost like everything is quiet right now, right? Everything is being held back right now. I believe. The opposite of what most people believe. They'll say, well, you know, it's a one in a million chance Yellowstone goes. I believe it's a one in a million chance Yellowstone does not go. It's by the grace of God, nothing has happened to it. I believe everything is being held in order for a reason, for, for the believer's sakes and for those who have been touched. Because in the scripture, when it says the powers of heaven shall be shaken, I cannot help but to think if the powers of heaven are going to be shaken during that time, right? Well, then that means they're stable right now, which means, and then you read in these uh, other books, right? Some of the other books, they're contested, of course, but they say that the angels will abandon their posts and they have been holding, right? They've been assigned to maintain their order all this time, 
but there is a time coming when they will abandon their posts. They will not watch over the orbits and they will not watch over uh, this being kept and that being kept. Because I honestly believe that every single force that man thinks is random is not random. Right. Right. It has, there's a directive behind it. Yes. But now we live in a time where actual mathematical constants that govern physics have to be changed because physics is not working the way it used to. Now, what's causing that? that you're, you're talking about some, some real changes in modeling and everything else concerning physics and dynamics and interactions and celestial mechanics and everything else is starting to go haywire. Right. Um, so, yeah, we, we have been fortunate, but our fortunate time is coming to an end, and I believe that people spiritually can sense that. Mike, uh, you brought up a 40-day warning back in February, around the February 19th, and, and of course, we've, we've been really wondering, and, and I don't know if you can go into it or not, but we're closing in on that 40th day, and I'm not holding you to a 40-day thing, but apparently there's some kind of event or something you're highly concerned about. Can you help us a little bit about that? Well, I'll say the safety of the people, right? Uh, their vigilance is everything. Sobriety and vigilance is everything right now. And um, we do not live in, in, these times are not as stable as one would think, right? Here, here's the unfortunate part. Are you talking mili um, militarily or uh, I mean, uh, where are we at? No, 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 no. Okay. When, when, when not, not, well, I, I, I can't say no to that either. I okay. can't say no because it, I can't say no. I, I will say this. Everything always seems fine until something drastic happens, right? And then when something drastic happens, everybody looks in hindsight. They look behind them and say, well, you know, there was a hint of this happening and there was a hint of that happening, and but it's too late. Lives are lost, right? Lives are ruined. And um, people's lives are shaken often with these events. The last time we were shaken like that was 9-11, right? We had minor shakings with Katrina and, and hurricanes and things like that, but we've had nothing major happen to us for a long time. We, we haven't. And it just so happens, I'll say it again, this issue with Israel and Hamas has a lot of backlash to it, major backlash, right? It has everybody disturbed. It really does. And it is a, that is both spiritual, that is uh, something that could quickly escalate into some very troubling things, right? Oh, and they know the sheriff could be coming back in town, and so um, they're not going to wait. They're just not taking, most people who do the monitoring. The sheriff? Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's Trump's name. Trump's oh, name yeah, is Trump's the sheriff. Oh, yeah, Trump's the sheriff. Okay, I got you. Thanks. He's the sheriff. Yeah, he is. And when he comes back and listen, though. Listen, before the sheriff comes back in town, right? Mm -hmm. Then that means all the bad guys have to make their move, coordinated. Mm. So, so don't be surprised if China sits and has more talks with North Korea in the, in the coming week, not weeks, week. Don't be surprised if militarily you see the U.S. make different movements in South America, in Cuba, in places like that. Right. Yep. Don't be surprised if surveillance, aerial surveillance of the USA is kicked up to a high degree. We have to watch our coastlines. Right. Don't be surprised if Russia starts to get kind of quiet as far as what they're doing by way of their military. Yep. If they start diverting their attention away from the Ukraine, which is what they're doing into other areas and, um, this nuclear language that he continues to use. Yep. You do realize he's coordinated his systems already with other countries. New, this is new, their nuclear systems. So he's not joking around. He's ready to defend everything he has to defend. Right. Do you think um, he'll, do you, I mean, I've really felt like he was going to use a tactical nuke somewhere before the end of 2024. Do you think he will be? I mean, he can only bluff so long. So he has to finally back up the bluff. He's not bluffing. That's the, that's the problem. He's not bluffing. He's actively hunting, right? Okay. Listen, to him, if NATO is positioned any closer to him, he's going to lose Russia, right? Right. He's yes. not alone. Yes. He's not alone in his thoughts. No. There are lots of high-level individuals who are with Putin, who believe in the same, you know, dictates the same, same precepts. And so he will absolutely do it. 
right? Now, China openly said, oh, no, don't use nuclear weapons, right? And so, but, but answer this, then why did China coordinate their firing systems with Russia? And why did Russia share all their tactical plans concerning nuclear warfare with China, right? Why does Russia continue to launch these, I'm going to call them uh, bull satellites, and what I mean by bull satellites, <clears throat> most people are, they think of lasers and everything else. In space, to stop another satellite, you just simply put another satellite in front of it and kapoof, right? So Russia has the material to launch many different satellites they can afford to hit our satellites with. Yeah. We already know we're being shadowed. Yeah. We're being shadowed in space. We're being shadowed on the ground. Our communications are tapped. There's a hacking campaign happening right now in the USA. People this week should have noticed something different with their computer systems, with their telephones, if they have heard some sort of a weird lag or echo on connection, right? There are active hacks happening all the time. Okay. But so everybody is listening to what everybody is doing. Why? Because things have escalated beyond the point where things can be controlled. And it's only a matter of time before all governors start moving on their own accord to protect their uh, respective states. Putin feels he's being provoked. Uh, is that just him talking or does he really believe or do or is he being provoked by NATO? Well, he's actually, Putin has maintained a course that if NATO, right, if NATO gets as close to him as the Ukraine, uh, they're going to lose Russia. He, he's not going to permit that, right? He's maintained that. And all the other countries have respected that. And so because of that, because of NATO's new decision, and because France is thinking about putting troops in the Ukraine. Yeah. Right? How, seri how serious? How serious? How serious is Emmanuel? It's very serious. Is he serious? Though? He's very. Yes, he's serious. Okay. He's serious. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to degrade the guy. No, I'm not either. I'm just because um, I hear this all the time. I hear all the time from people. Uh, he's not going to do anything. He's not really. It's not even Macron. That's just the media hyping it up. I'm thinking, no, that's coming out of his mouth. He actually, I, I would, you know, some of those people, they don't know what he's actually performed already. Okay. So that's the problem, right? A lot of what he does is behind the scenes. He's not going to market everything he does. But right. that's France, of course. So. Right. But, um, NATO, right? NATO is trying to get a foothold in that area, and it will cause at some point um, a major event, a major event. But at the same time, Iran is coordinating to make their move on Israel right now. And Benjamin Netanyahu knows this. Yes, this he is does. happening right now. This is in real time. So nobody should be surprised again in another two weeks if a massive assault happens against israel what two weeks and don't be shocked weeks. if it doesn't happen all right now does this red heifer they built the altar okay cbs news nbc news i've been telling people for forever that this day was coming and they have built the altar i actually could probably pull it put it up on the screen i already did it in a broadcast the red heifers are in the stall the guy that owns the land 12 acres directly across from the uh, Temple Mount on the Mount of Olives says they can come and do it here. And Hamas has already said this is the reason that they attacked on October 7th. But it looks like Israel's still going forward. Mike, what are you hearing in the weeds? What are you hearing? What's the chatter? Well, if a person has uh, if, a, if, if a person has Israeli blood, right, of course they're going to have internal family insight into certain things and they would know that um israel certain parties and families within lots of families are involved in in the building of the new temple yeah okay lots yes. of families yeah families who have kept uh very special items for hundreds of years families who have kept them to a degree when they were ousted and went all over the world they kept those items right they kept them. It's unbelievable, but that's a story within itself, but they kept them. So they have gone, they have already taken steps to do quite a bit, right? In some cases, all they have to do is maneuver uh, specific things in place. They have interests because the location uh, and, and what direction they face when they do this 
is important. All of it's key and critical. So all those areas have to be cleared, right? Um, and they're doing it. They're doing it. It's, a, it's almost, it's very high level coordination. It's very consistent. Um, nobody has slowed down in doing anything. They're just not disclosing everything. Right. Right. Because they know for a fact, if they start disclosing anything, uh, everybody's going to try and stop it. Right. So, so they won't talk about it. And in the minds of many, it does not exist. So you, you warned us it, it's possible. Be, be on alert that in two weeks. There could be attack on Israel again. Are, are we oh, talking yes. Hezbollah, possibly Hezbollah with thousands of rockets overwhelming? It'll be, it'll be, it'll have to be uh, almost like, um, and this will be much bigger. Okay. It had to be much bigger. Like a, co um, a coordinated effort between Houthis and Hezbollah and Iran and maybe even some of the, you don't ever trust Jordan. I mean, I mean is that no, what, I don't. Is that no, what no, you're talking about no, no. here? Well, you're dealing with the Islamic kingdoms, right? And yeah. People are going to start hearing a lot about prophecies of the Islamic kingdoms in about another uh, week or so. They'll start to hear a lot of uh, statements given by those, ex the Islamic kingdoms. Of course, when that happens, uh, people will act on their faith. And in this case, the Islamic world is going to act on their faith. And when they act on their faith, uh, it is in their faith to burn us up, the USA, and to burn Israel, right? They cannot attack Israel and not have us burning. We have to be burning when they attack Israel. The USA has to be on fire when they attack Israel, right? Now, so this brings up something else. When people start seeing folks all throughout America, hunting and sniffing and searching, right? With lots of chemical gear and lots of protective gear. Now you know why. Now you know why. There's an active campaign to burn America down to the ground, to ashes. And before the sheriff comes in, they have to do it. They cannot wait uh, for the installment of the sheriff. They can't do that. I, I want to say something about the, the, the fire across America. George Washington saw that in his vision about um, uh, when an angel came to him, he said, and showed him America on fire from one coast to the other. A.A. A. Allen had a vision, and I've p posted that before in one of my books. I think the self-published book I did called Reflection of the Land of the Prophets, and I share a lot of prophecies of some of these guys. <laughs> Allen saw... He stood up on the mountain. He was standing on the Empire State Building. He's seen the America burning in a vision from one coast to the other. Dr. Lester Summerall preached about it. I, I sat there and heard him say it, that one day you'll see America on fire across the nation. And, and Dimitri Dudeman prophesied that just before the coming of the Lord, there will be a fire across America. So we've had some of our modern-day prophets already tell us this. You're telling that it's coming before there can be even an attack. I'm hearing you say there could be an attack in two weeks on Israel, and I'm hearing you say an America could be burning during the time of the attack. This means we've entered into this critical moment. We're in a critical moment, Mike. Is yes, that what you're are. saying? Yeah, we are. We really are. And, and I'm prayerful that people will be at least, I, I know they're spiritually alert, right? I also know that people are trying to, they're, they're trying to determine what the spiritual urgency is that they keep sensing. Um, these guys that hate America are extremely active. And as of late, because of Hamas and Israel, this recent uh, conflict, there have been a lot of people uh, within the USA who have, they've just, you know, it's almost like treason. That they're more oh, loyal yeah, uh, to Hamas and the ideology of Hamas now treason. more than ever. Yeah, I mean this this Rashid Talib, it's treason, and not just her. Sh Chucky Schumer last week, not just him, but I mean we've had to listen to AOC, we've had to listen to uh, some of these others left, really left wing liberal loonies, and even yeah, well, even and, Biden and, is wa wavering. And they were, you know, they won't say this unless they have a huge support base by voters. Folks, listen to me. Chuck Schumer would not utter anything like that unless he had a huge support base by voters in the USA. Yeah. You know what that means? That means you have about 80 million people out there who agree with Chuck Schumer. Yeah, I know. Right? Yep. But, but these days are 
not like the other days, we have about 80 million people who are ready to act to establish an America absent the ideologies that we have previously had. And we're in, you know, so don't be surprised if local law enforcement, uh, DHS is placed all over the place. When you have the FBI in prayer, right? Oh, something is wrong, correct? <laughs> yeah, or yeah, I'm shocked by that one. But yes, you're right. Uh, it's 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 very concerning. I mean, this country's on fire, basically. Um, we're polarized. We're what Jesus said: a, a, a nation divided can't stand. I mean, we're really Shut polarized here. Uh, we really are, and. Uh, so the sheriff's coming. Now, I did, I did hear uh, a man, and I can't remember him. I think it was on the – I actually think it was during the webinar, so I, I better not say much more about it because what he said. But he's seen the stone steps that you're talking about, you've been talking about. He's seen the sheriff being handcuffed and led down the steps. Does the reaction of – and he's seen it in late – he said in late October – and he's got intel even on this. So my question to you is, I mean, you know, you always hear the October surprise. Or is America in for something shocking in October? We, Pastor Paul, I, I tell you what, it, uh, many years ago, by the way, this I had that that visual of the Stone Steps. I believe that was yeah. about 2000. That was back in the early 2000s, and which is on but um yeah it was early 2000s and it just seems like we're just slowly steadily approaching you know that time i mean back then it was impossible for the sheriff to be the sheriff right back then. that was even that was then. nobody was thinking about that that was in but he would you know that's impossible but then when the sheriff became the sheriff okay that changed everything and ever since that time uh everybody has been you know they've been fighting the legal system Everybody has been threatening to send everybody to jail. So due to the tenacity of this, of the um, opposing side, pass ball and what they want to do uh, to the opposite side, right? Because they want to prosecute and they're not taking no for an answer. That means there'll be no peace between the two, right? It also means retaliation is coming. Should the other side gain power, right? Yeah. Retaliation is coming, and they know this. Yeah, so it's a, that's the beginning of a that's the beginning of a war, of a war, a real war. So it's which a means, no it's a no win situation. That's right. Well, I, I tell you what, they will end up killing each other and taking a lot of people with them. My advice to anybody is: don't enter into the violence. Right? Everybody's right. going to have their sentiments, their it. ideas, but don't enter into the violence. Because think about this. Think about people who do enter into the violence, and it just so happens to be the time that America, for the first time, has foreign uh, foreign military on their soil, and it goes absolutely wrong, right? Now, all those people who sowed mercy will reap mercy, but all those people who sowed violence will reap violence. Yes. That means they won't have help, right? They, yeah, they're not. We've got to stay now, calm. Right now, people don't believe that, right? And nobody believes anything until the repercussions absolutely come. But I can tell you right now, for anybody who sows mercy and they live in that, that domain of mercy, now, mercy is not wimpyism. That's not what that is. You know, mercy with courage is when you have integrity and do the right thing when nobody's looking. That's mercy. And when you utilize the Father's wisdom and his ways in your life as you walk, not to murder your brother, right? No, not no, to do that. No, no. But um, but you have a lot of murderous mindsets in America. Right I know, now. and I that know. goes hand in hand with the with this iniquitous mindset that people have because they all they want to be is entertained. Unfortunately, we have reached the boiling point, and so you know, within this little two week period, we could see a lot of things unfold. Um, we really could see a lot of things. Unfold. I think you're right. But I do know for a fact, I do know for a fact, consequences are coming. Harm is coming, right? Yeah. Fire is coming. Pastor Paul, and I pray that people are ready and vigilant. Um, they, they have to, whatever they're going to do, they better settle it now because um, it looks as if nothing is going to stop that. 
Well, country. I think you've given us some great advice that we can't change some of these things that are bound to and destined to happen, but we can have our heart changed to be on the right side of, of God's requirement. I mean, we're required as Christians to stand for, uh, to protect our families and to stand for the truth, but at the same time, we're required to walk in faith and to be good to all men and to uh, pray and to uh, be, uh, have the integrity. I think I've heard you say, you know, really walk according to the, how Jesus would want us to do in these times. That's not wimpy. That just says, look, you can't get evil thoughts. You can't start creating evil thoughts of maliciousness and revenge and vengeance. God said, vengeance is mine. You don't need to be in that category. You stay in that category of, of, of the great commission. But at the same time, you're not asleep. You're awake to the reality. Right. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a prayerful thing. Here's the bottom line. If you've ever prayed in your life, and I'm not talking about, yeah, I'm going to pray about it. No, I'm talking about get down and pray till you hear from heaven, till you start having a daily communication with God the Father. I don't think people even know what prayer is half the time, Mike. I, I really don't. Prayer is when you can get a hold of the throne and the throne can get a hold of you. Uh, you know, it's it's like the old days when we had the phone. You call somebody, this, they got to pick up the phone. You, you've you got to be able to have a connection. You should know their voice. You don't have to ask, is that you? You know the voice of the Lord. The Bible says you, you'll know uh, the shepherd. You'll know, uh, but but uh, a stranger you will not hear. So right. I'm, say, I'm, I'm hearing you say we've got to prepare ourselves. These next two weeks could be very vi- volatile, very dangerous. Uh, and so we see that here. And, and it's not just America. The Middle East is about ready to go through. Look, we're, cl- we're closing in on Passover. This red heifer thing is, could blow this thing sky high. I mean, uh, and, and we got, we've got that type of pressure cooker. Seems like all over the globe, Mike, all over the globe. We do. Yep, we do. We do. And I'll tell you, these guys have made their plans past ball and they're, they are, uh, they're going forward, you know, with, Whatever they have planned, they're going forward with it. Uh, so the unfolding, we'll see. We'll most certainly see it. I do not believe it's going to pass. I don't. I, I say that because of people's hearts. Yeah, but that's why I say that because yeah, of you're not being hearts. negative. You're not being negative. You're just being. You're being uh, realistic. You don't yeah. see till you see repentance and changing of hearts. The 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 trail they're on is continuing down that path. Yeah, because that's the only time I've seen things absolutely changes when people repent and turn back and, and to the father. But if they don't do that, uh, it's not going to change. Then things will continue. I just hope that God's children are astute listening. Uh, by the way, I didn't listen to, to Rex bear before I got on. Yeah. Awesome. You got some awesome people on this, uh, on this, uh, uh, uh the special that you have, uh, put together pastor Paul. That, that is amazing. I hope that people, Heed the warnings. I, I really do. I really do. Well, you really, uh, I really do. You really put out some uh, strong warnings and, and, and eye-opening information that had me just uh, shaken. Um, and you're right. Rex did a great job tonight, and he really had a great presentation. But he's not the only one. Like, you know, BP Earth Watch is uh, astonishing. And he's a very smart guy, and, and he figures things out. They're all doing a really oh, yeah. They all yeah. have done very yeah. well in this. This is, this is a webinar I think people, boy— you got to have this info. I can't say it anymore. And I wish I could talk it openly here on this forum, but I can. And Mike knows that. I mean, we, we skirt the edges a lot, um, trying to be careful because we need to be able to reach the masses with the truth. And, uh, and, and I appreciate, Mike, what you did. Uh, so I, I, if guys get your ticket for this webinar, because I think what Mike from around the world, his presentation and the rest of the people, everyone involved, uh, it's going to be, uh, definitely an eye opening. And I believe it will encourage you because if you're, if you don't have the truth, your knowledge, you know, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It says in the, in the book of Proverbs. You got to know what's going on, and then you got to know what the Bible says about it, and then you got to walk in that path. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, Mike, thank you. That's right. Thank you for coming on tonight, being with us uh, once again. Great information and great, uh, you know, encouragement. 
and also warning us. And I've heard you say the word warning 25 times tonight. And I think we better get that message, folks, because this is the time we're in. Mike, I appreciate you coming on tonight. Fastball is always an honor. As you know, Mike, the honor's mine, believe me, and all of us. Thank you. All right. God bless. God bless.